Good morning, everyone. Well, Tony Campolo was invited to speak many years ago at a church at a missions rally. The church was a very large, wealthy church, not unlike the one we're in this morning. Just before he came to the podium, the uh, pastor of the church read a letter from a missionary doctor that the church had been supporting overseas for a few years. This missionary doctor uh, was asking the church for uh, some additional funds. He needed 5,000 extra dollars to help with a, a medical center that he was helping to run. And so the pastor introduced Campolo and he said, uh, Tony, when you come forward, would you pray that God would provide that $5,000 for us to support the missionary doctor? Campolo stepped up to the podium and he said, no. I'm not going to pray that. Taking some people uh, by surprise and Campolo looking out at the large group of, uh, of very wealthy people, he said, I'm not going to pray that. He said, I'm not going to pray that God will provide all those needs, but I'll tell you what I will do. I will reach in my pocket and I will pull out all the cash that I have and I will give all the cash I have to that doctor and I challenge everybody here to do the same thing. And then after everybody does, then I'll pray. And so, slowly, kind of hesitantly at first, one or two people began to come forward. And they, uh, after Campolo did, they laid their, their cash on the table. They emptied their pocketbooks. And then a few more other people did it, emptied their, their pockets and their pocketbooks and their wallet. And, and, and Campolo was very clear. He said, I just want your cash, no checks. And this was many years ago, long before you could text your gift or you could Venmo your money. He said, I just want your cash. So it took a while for everybody to come forward, but eventually everybody came forward, and they did. And true to his word, after everybody came forward, Campolo prayed. And when it was all said and done and everybody had come forward, they had collected over $8,000. They needed five, they got eight. That prayer of request originally had become a prayer of thanksgiving. Now, I'm sure Campolo gave a very compelling message uh, afterward. He, he's a very good speaker. I've heard him speak a few times. In fact, the very first time I heard Tony Campolo speak was right here in this church. Probably, I don't know, 20 or so years ago. Some of you may have even been here. Anybody here that time? Yeah, Kevin was here. He stood right here and spoke. He's a great speaker, so I'm sure he, he gave a very inspiring sermon after. I'm also sure that nobody remembered a word he said, because what they remembered is what they did that day. And some I prob probably would say that a miracle happened that day. I mean, hundreds of people parted with their cash. No questions asked. I would say that's kind of miraculous. I've seen organizations raise enormous sums, sums of money uh, in one evening at an auction. I've seen that happen a few times, in fact. You probably have too. But in those situations, people get something in return for their money. But those people who laid down their cash that day with Campolo, they didn't get anything for their money. Or did they? I want to get back to that question in just a few moments. But first, I want to, to delve into this scripture today, the story that's known as the feeding of the 5,000, which of course is a misnomer because as Matthew points out, there were 5,000 men in attendance that day besides women and children. So, uh, you know, unless uh, the women and the children were just sitting there watching the men eat, which I hope they were not, we can assume that there were way more than 5,000 people who were fed that day. Just prior to our scripture, uh, what was happening uh, in the scripture story is that Jesus had just heard the news of the death of John the Baptist. John, you may remember, had been brutally murdered. He had been beheaded by Herod while John was in prison. 
And upon hearing this news, Jesus had withdrawn. He was trying to get away from everybody to, to grieve the loss of his cousin, his dear friend. He was trying to get away from everyone, but he wasn't alone very long because the people found him. They followed after him. And even in his grief, in the midst of this grief, Jesus saw the crowds of people. Matthew says he had compassion for them. Mark's gospel puts it even a different way. Mark says that Jesus saw them as sheep without a shepherd. He became their shepherd. He took time with them. He, he listened to them. He taught them. He healed them. Even in his anguish, even in this uh, wounded emotional state that Jesus found himself grieving, still he gives all he has. He empties himself for others. This is what love does. Love is miraculous in that way. Christ-like love moves us to think of others ahead of ourselves. Paul, the Apostle Paul, picks up on this in the book of Philippians in chapter 2. He says that while Jesus was in the form of God, he didn't exploit that power. Instead, Paul says, Jesus emptied himself, called the kenosis of God. He emptied himself. Therefore, Paul says, let us have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, looking not to our own interests, but first to the interests of others. Which brings us back to this scripture story today, the feeding of the 5,000 plus. This story has brought uh, a fair amount of debate among scholars over the centuries. While it, its place and its importance in the Bible is not up for debate, because it's the only miracle of Jesus that is recorded by all four of the gospel writers. So uh, it's, it's certainly central to our, our Christian story. But what scholars have debated for a long time is exactly what happened. What happened that evening when all those people were gathered in that deserted place? Well, it's simple. Some people say, many people say it's simple. Jesus miraculously multiplied a small amount of bread and fish so that people would have enough. In other words, Jesus made food appear where there had not been food before. But maybe there's another explanation. Many scholars would suggest. Perhaps, they say, perhaps as, as Jesus and the, and the disciples were willing to, to share their meager amount of food with all the people there, the members of that crowd were deeply moved by that generosity. That even though Jesus and the twelve must have been hungry themselves, and five little loaves of bread and, and two little fish certainly wasn't enough to feed 13 people. This moved the folks there. This inspired the folks in that large crowd to start sharing themselves. To start giving what they had. Whatever small or meager rations that they may have brought for themselves. Maybe one or two people got it started maybe followed by a few more, and before long it became contagious, and it broke out all over, and everybody began to share what they had until everyone there in the crowd had enough. As the scholars have suggested, uh, this is not to doubt the ability of Jesus to, to multiply the bread and the fish from nothing, because we see Jesus perform many other miracles in the Gospels, but as they say, couldn't it be that it's an even bigger miracle to get 5,000 plus people to stop thinking about themselves for a while and actually care about the welfare and the needs of others to the point that they would give away what they have. Perhaps, as they suggest, perhaps transforming thousands of selfish hearts and opening those hearts to share what they have with Strangers might be an even more significant miracle. 
not terribly unlike what happened that afternoon with that church as they laid down their money with Tony Campolo. I looked up the word miracle since that's really the subject of today. I looked it up. There are a few definitions. The number one definition of miracle in the dictionary is a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Now, by that definition, you know, we could suggest that giving away what we have for the benefit of other people rather than just keeping it or hoarding it to ourselves might just be a, a little bit of a miracle. Because, number one, it's a surprise, as the definition says. It goes against what most people are expecting us to do, and it goes against what we're taught by our culture. And again, in keeping with the definition, we're inspired by God, divine agency, to do it out of our love for God and our love for others. And one of the best examples that we have of, of this kind of divine love and, and giving is our own John Wesley, the founder of, of Methodism. Wesley actually uh, was a pretty wealthy man when it comes to uh, income, but as Wesley's income grew uh, throughout his life, what was interesting about him was that he continued to live on the exact same expenses throughout his entire life. So even as an older man, when he made a, a lot of money, he lived on the same expenses he had when he was a very young man. He was of the opinion that as your income grew, it was your giving to others that should increase, not your standard of living. For instance, in one year of John Wesley's life, he actually gave away 98% of his income. 98% to the church and to the poor. And it was not unusual at all for Wesley in a typical year to give away 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of his income to the poor and to the church. Wesley lived a life that we could call miraculous in that way because his extravagant, lavish generosity accomplished something that could really only be explained by as the definition says, divine agency. John Wesley's love of God, his love of neighbor, inspired him to share so much of who he was and what he had with others. By the way, if you'd like to, to know more about John Wesley, here's my little commercial, my 15-second commercial for the day. If you want to know more about John Wesley, come to England with me next year. My wife, Lisa, and I are going to go to England next July, July of 2024, on a Wesley, John Wesley Heritage Tour, a nine-day tour. We're going to learn all about Wesley. We're going to go to all the places where Wesley lived, where he was born. We're going to go to Epworth and uh, Oxford and London, and it's going to be a wonderful trip. We'd love to have you come and join us. We're going to have a learning session about that trip in just two weeks from today on August the 20th. We'd love for you to come. We'd love to take us to whole, we'd love to take 100 people with us to England next year. What a gift John Wesley was to the world in the way that he modeled those words of, of John Wesley, or, or those words of Paul, I mean, words of emptying oneself, not looking to the interests of others, but looking to, or the, your own interest, but looking to the interests of others. And perhaps that's what those folks were doing that evening in that deserted place. They were inspired by the giving love of Jesus. And they loved one another enough to share what they had. And where at the beginning there was not enough food, now miraculously there was enough for everyone. When we're able to change our minds that way, or change our mindsets from, from self to other, when we're able to empty ourselves like Jesus... That's when something like miracles begin to happen more often. It was Churchill 
who said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And maybe that's what was happening that afternoon in that church when all those folks were laying down their cash with Campolo. Maybe people were just making a life. I asked that question earlier, what did they get out of it? What do those people get out of giving that money away? Well, maybe what they got out of it is that they were making a life for themselves. They were certainly making life better for people around the world. They were strengthening their connection with their brothers and sisters in a different part of the world. They were participating in the body of Christ of which we are all a part. We are all interrelated to one another as children of God. And they were quite literally emptying a part of themselves. They were emptying their pockets and putting someone before themselves. They were making a life. Anytime I hear or read the story of the feeding of the 5,000 plus, I'm just reminded of this story, a story that probably many of you have heard before. About the man who goes to God and he says, God, I want to see what heaven and hell are like. And so God shows the man two doors. Behind the first door, the man sees a a large round table and in the middle of the table is a a great big pot of delicious smelling stew. And sitting around the table are, are a whole bunch of very thin emaciated, miserable-looking people. They're trying to eat the stew, but they can't eat it because the spoons they're using are so long. They're longer than their arms, and they can't get the food into their own mouths. And it's so miserable that the man has to turn away, and God closes the door and says, you've just seen hell. And he opens the second door for them, and the man looks inside. It's the exact same thing. A big round table with a big pot of delicious smelling stew in the middle of it, the same long spoons sitting on the table. But in this room, he sees smiling, happy, well-nourished people, and the man looks at God and says, I don't understand. And God says, it's simple, really. Love requires one skill. The people in the first room were only concerned about feeding themselves. The people in the second room, they learned how to share and they fed each other. We don't know exactly what happened in that deserted place that that evening with Jesus and the 5,000 plus people. We don't know exactly what happened, but some miracle occurred that allowed them all to have enough. Perhaps, perhaps the miracle is that they learned to feed each other. Thinking of others before ourselves, giving away what we have rather than keeping it and hoarding it, saving it, that's not what we are taught by the world to do. But it's the way of Jesus who models for us sharing and giving out of our abundance, even emptying ourselves for the good of everyone. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And I would say, I would add to that, the more that we give like Jesus, the more likely we will see miracles happen. Amen.